All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what we did today with free body diagrams. Uh, we looked at force gravitational's effect, force gravity's effect on free body diagrams. And so I'm going to go through that real quick. Okay. So anytime you have a free body diagram, I'm going to go ahead and underline the important stuff real quick. So anytime you have a free body diagram, the very first thing you want to look at is the downward arrow, the vector that's pointing downward. And the reason for that is because it's going to help us with all of our other all of our other values, okay? especially when we get into force friction later on and coefficient of friction, all that good stuff. Okay? So I know this downward force on Earth, if I drop something, it's going to fall, right? If there's nothing to support it or nothing to help it stop from falling, it's force gravitation, right? Force gravitational. Okay? And we know from the class period before and the following days that force gravitational I'm going to grab this and bring it with me. Force gravitational means weight, and it's calculated by doing M times G, mass times gravitational field, or G. Okay. So let's copy this. All right. There we go. I'm going to leave this here. Let's group it. for me so I can use this in a minute. Okay, cool. So I'm going to put this right here so I have this. Okay. All right, so force gravitational is there. Every time I have a downward vector, I want to label it force gravity, and I want to put the equation immediately. Immediately. This is big. You need to make sure to do this immediately. Okay, this is why. Because now I can figure out my weight or my force gravitational by plugging in the mass. And on Earth, my G is 10 meters per second squared. Okay, so I'm going to plug in this 10 right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Always write the equation so you can see what you did if you mess up. 20, because the 20 goes here. And for G, I'm putting 10. So my downward force weight is 200 newtons. Okay, 200 newtons. So what's the value of the down force weight or force gravity? 200 newtons. What is the value of the upward force? Well, if I'm on a tabletop, if you look at something on a table, is it accelerating? There's no acceleration. The change in velocity is zero. And force net, if there's no acceleration, is zero, right? So the reason why this object doesn't accelerate downward is because the force normal balances out force gravitational. So you know this has to be 200 as well, 200 newtons. Okay? Cool, or what? That's only for things that are on a surface, right? Or let's say you had drag force, and if you were going at constant velocity, you would know even though there's 200 newtons pulling down, the drag force or the wind resistance would also be 200 newtons. Okay, cool. Let's work on this one now. Okay, I'm going to speed up a little bit so we can get through all these. Okay, here we go. Force net. Oh, boy. I have to add these up. So in this way, it's zero, right? 30 minus 30. I have zero here, but I have a blank here. But what did I say to do? This downward vector, you always want to label it. Force, what force is pointing down? Gravity. What was the equation? Mass times your gravity, your gravitational field. We're on Earth. So let's see. I plug in a 15 to mass. And I do 10. So what's that come out to? 15 times 10, 150 newtons. Right? So what's my weight then? If my force gravity is 150, well, my weight is also 150 because this means weight. Okay, your weight points downward on Earth. Force net, so let's see, I did 30 minus 30, so 0 in the horizontal axis. I do 150 minus 0, so what's my force net? 150 newtons. What is the A? A stands for acceleration on the object if the object is on Earth and the G field, gravitational field, is 10 meters per second squared. So remember, what is our equation for acceleration? That was Newton's second law. Acceleration is? Force net, force net, divided by mass. And we just figured out the force net, right? We subtracted. Okay. Here we go. Accelerate. Always write the equation. So you can plug it in and I can check your work. Divided by mass. So what's my force net? 150. It's only 150 because there's no force up here. If this was like 10, I'd have to subtract it. Okay. So I'll do a problem like that in a minute. Divided by the mass, 15. This comes out to 10 meters per second squared. 
everything on Earth is going to accelerate 10 meters per second squared if there's no force pointing this way, okay? Okay. So this is a, a thing we need to talk about real quick. This is, if you're on a surface, we call this force normal because it's 90 degrees. This is normal force, force, normal. Okay, if I had a wall instead, I had a wall, and I was pushing this box against the wall, and I'm pushing against the wall, which way would the force go? Pushing the force inward. And the wall pushes which way? Is it up? No, it pushes 90 degrees to the surface. It pushes that way. So this would be force applied, and this would be force normal. Force normal, because it's 90 degrees to the surface. Cool. Okay, so take this box. Let's say that I'm... I have a 3 kilogram box. Right? I'm on Earth. <clears throat> or, oh yeah, I'm on Earth. So what's my force gravitational? Well, 3 times 10, right? This gets you 30 newtons. But now let's say that I had some drag, right? Like a, like a feather has some air drag, right? Air resistance. Let's say I had 15 newtons of air resistance or force going up. So what would happen? How do I figure out my acceleration? Well, the equation for acceleration is what? My equation for acceleration. You can write it down. Force net divided by mass. Let's do that. Acceleration equals F net divided by mass. Do you see why it's important to do this one first? Because in order to calculate force net, I need to have both of my vectors. So I get 30 minus 15 because they're going opposite ways. 30 minus 15 over. 3. So what do we get? 30 minus 15 is 15. Divided by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. Acceleration, right? Meters per second squared. Okay? So this isn't a perfect 10 meters per second like we had in the previous problem. Because on Earth, we usually have air resistance. Cool? Or what? Great. Okay, let's see how much time we have. Alright, so that's it. We'll go ahead and leave it there for now. I'll give you the answers to these real quick, just because I'm going to work them out real fast. Okay, no time to explain. Mass of the feather, two kilogram. What is the weight of the feather? Weight is this one, three times ten, twenty newtons. So twenty newtons on Earth. What is the weight of the feather on the Moon? So this time it's two times g of the Moon. Point six. This comes out to three point two newtons. Okay, down here. These zero out, don't worry about it. Have no force going upward. Force net is so force net is this one minus this one. Three times ten. Thirty newtons. And the absence of which force creates downward acceleration. There could be two, right? Normal force and drag force or air resistance. What is the weight of the feather on Earth? Here we got it. There it is. What's the weight of the feather on the moon? That is 3 times 1.6, 4.8 newtons. So without drag force, the feather cannot reach terminal velocity. Okay, terminal velocity is just the maximum speed you can go um, with air drag and force gravity balanced out. Right. So eventually this feather will go the same speed, and you saw that in the video today.